This is a demonstration of the tension tight locking button done with an all arthroscopic super pectoral technique. So I'm now in the subacromial space and you can see we got a pretty good rotator cuff. We got the rotator uh, cuff area here and then we got the deltoid fascia. And you can see here's the spinal needle we insert and this helps immensely to help you find that biceps groove. You can also look at where the cannula is, which is way down here, right there. And that's another good landmark that's usually just lateral to the cannula in order to find the biceps. Well, we know we speared the biceps here, and that's going to be our really nice landmark to help us start dissecting down the transverse humeral ligament. We have our spinal needle that's holding the tendon in place right at the top of the biceps groove as the long head of the biceps exits the joint and makes that killer turn. We have the transverse humeral ligament fully released. And we see the bottom of the transverse humeral ligament right about here where the cannula is, and that's going to be our fixation location. So at this point, I'm going to mark the location of where we're going to put the tension tight locking button. I do this with an Apollo wand. This also clears off the periosteum. Another thing I like to do is a little bit of a bone cutter shaver just to lightly decorticate the area. Because this is an onlay biceps technique, I would like to have some healing elements just distal to where I'm going to fix this with the tension tight locking button. You can use a scorpion passer to do the loop and tack construct. The first loop is around the biceps tendon, and now we're going to do the tack stitch about five to seven millimeters distal to the initial loop. It is important to make sure you're in the center of the biceps tendon so you get maximal biomechanical hold. So this is the tension tight locking button. It comes with a suture loader. The key to this is not to pass a lot of suture because this is a very thick number five so that the locking mechanism and the button can work well. So in general, I pass about one to two inches through the suture loader. And a key thing here is you don't want to engage the double suture until you're ready to lock this down and it's in bone. Until you have that double suture in the tension tight locking button, you can slide it back and forth until that button will fully engage with the thicker suture. We're then going to use the 37 spade tip drill in the super pectoral location that we previously marked. This is drilled in a unicortical fashion. We do not pass this all the way across the humerus as the button will be docked on the anterior cortex. So there's a laser line on the inserter and you want to have that facing superior. Here you can see the locking mechanism. We still have the single suture in place before the double strand engages this locking mechanism. So the button is deployed and the inserter is still in. One thing I like doing is just gently tensioning this end of the tension tight suture just to make sure that the button flips before taking out the inserter. You can see it very nicely sitting under the biceps groove now in a unicortical fashion. One final thing to ensure adequate fixation of the button to the suture and the tendon construct is through the loop out here, I put my finger and just tension individually the two limbs of suture to make sure that this is fully down. There are two more steps now. We just have to cut the suture with a suture cutter and then remove the biceps tendon, cutting it superior to the loop intact construct. At this point, you can remove the spinal needle. And then the last part is removing 
the remaining proximal stump of the long head of the biceps tendon. Here's the empty biceps groove. And the tendon lying right at the bottom of the biceps groove in an onlay technique fixed with a tension tight locking button.